In this video, we cover an introduction to complex numbers. And I'd like to start the video off by posing this question. Let's find the solutions, or in other words, the roots or the x-intercepts of this quadratic here, x squared subtract 2x plus four. Now, if you're up to complex numbers in your math journey, you've probably gone through this topic before and you would have a few techniques in your arsenal to how to solve quadratics, uh, potentially factorize the quadratic and then use the null factor law, that would be one. Completing the square, that would be two. And usually as a last resort, it would be using the quadratic formula, which is what I have started off here. So I substituted in my values for A, B, and C, did some working, and I got to this point here and I thought, oh no, I can't proceed any further. I have the square root of a negative number, therefore my quadratic, does not have any real solutions. And if I was to visualize the quadratic, that is indeed the case. It does not cut through the x-axis, therefore it does not have any real solutions. So we would usually stop at this point here. However, if we, if we now introduce complex numbers and how to deal with the square root of negative numbers, we can actually take this further and find the complex roots of this quadratic. So let's go ahead and do this. And then during this process, you'll start to see what an imaginary number is, which is um, how to deal with the square root of negative numbers, and then at the end, what a complex number is in Cartesian form. So let's go ahead and do this. I need to deal with the square root of negative 12, so I'm going to split the negative 12 up into three factors of negative 12. And I'm going to choose four, three, and negative one. And I wanted to do it in this way because I want the square root of negative one because that allowed me to replace that by this new number i, which stands for an imaginary number. But we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. So this is still all over two. Now using my knowledge of thirds, I can actually break up these three factors that are all under the same square root sign into three individual thirds. So this will become two plus or minus square root four multiplied by square root three multiplied by square root of negative one over two. Now I know that the square root of four is two. I'm going to leave the square root of three as is, and the square root of negative number, here's where we introduce this new number here, this new number i. i stands for an imaginary number, and where i is the square root of negative one. So now we can deal with square roots of negative numbers because we can replace it with this imaginary number i. So if I take this one step further, this will be two plus or minus, now root four is just two, root three I'm gonna leave as is, is root three, and the square root of negative one I'm gonna replace with i, all over two. Now if I look at this here, the two root three i, sometimes the i is written in between the two and the root three. Uh, I tend to like to leave it um, at the end, but some textbooks will have this as two i root three. Uh, I can actually simplify this one step further now looking at it, I can divide both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by a common factor two. So that leaves me with a nice simple, and, it, and, and what I'm about to write here is called a complex number, one plus or minus root three i. And it's called a complex number because it has an imaginary component. Part of the number is attached to this imaginary number i. Now, if you're wondering what these roots look like, it's, that's a very good question, uh, it's called an imaginary number here because it's not, I can't actually point to it on the real number line. Uh, Wikipedia has a nice diagram here of what the complex roots of a quadratic looks like if you try to imagine it or visualize it. So this black line here is a quadratic. It sits above the uh, x-axis, so there's no real solutions. And the complex solutions will be this orange line here, which is kind of ref a reflection, um, a horizontal reflection about the turning point. Now I won't go into too much detail here because feel free to go and read this article just by searching quadratic equation Wikipedia. But if I was to drill into the explanation of this, that would take me quite a long time. So I'll, I'll leave that for you to read up on. Okay, but let's now summarize what we have covered so far. We have introduced this new type of number here and this actually completes our number system. So our number system was um, positive integers, all integers, real numbers, irrational numbers, and this is actually the last part of that now, imaginary numbers i, and this allows to us to deal with the square root of negative numbers where i is defined as the square root of negative one. 
we have also introduced what a complex number is, which is uh, in Cartesian form, which is one of the three forms of complex numbers that you'll encounter in your course. I'll cover the other two forms, which is polar and Euler in the next video. But so far we have what a complex number is in Cartesian form. So back to my example here to start the video, I had one plus square root three i. So the form of a complex number in Cartesian form is a plus b i. Now we usually textbooks and exam papers will define complex numbers either as Z or W. So I'm just gonna use Z here. So the complex number in Cartesian form is Z equals A plus B I. So as an example, so let's just do example. Let's just say Z is equal to, and I'll use this example that I uh, brought down from the uh, first example. I'll just use the positive version of this. So this example will be one plus root three I. Now this complex number here has both real components, which is the one, there's no I attached to the one, and also an imaginary component, which is the root three I. And you can actually uh, write that down. So the proper notation of defining that will be the real component of my complex number Z is equal to one, and the imaginary component of my complex number Z is equal to root three. Now the final thing I want to cover in this video is to how to visualize a complex number in Cartesian form on a complex plane. Now that sounds quite difficult, complex planes and complex numbers, uh, but it's actually not. If you have a sound understanding of coordinate geometry, so how to plot coordinates on an X, Y axis, um, it's about, that's about all it is to it, except it's not, it's, it, we're no longer gonna have an X, Y axis, we're actually gonna have a real and an imaginary axis. Let's go ahead and visualize that. So this here, so we have this first point here, second point here, the third point I wanna cover is complex planes. Now they are also known as Argan diagrams, and I actually tend to call them Argan diagrams but the AI um, documentation actually refers to them as complex planes, argand diagrams, but they, they are the same things. Okay, so a complex plane has a horizontal and vertical axis, but it's no longer an X and Y axis, it's actually a real, which is the horizontal, has a real axis and an imaginary axis. So this here is our complex plane. Now, if I want to plot this particular, and I'll choose a different color here, this particular complex number here that I've defined as Z onto my complex plane, it's quite simple. All I need to do is to find the real component. So let's just say this is one, two, three. And my real component here is one. So my real component of my complex number Z is equal to one and also my imaginary component, which is root three. Now root three is a decimal is about 1.7. So one, two, so my imaginary component of Z is equal to root three, it's about here. So to plot this complex number on my complex plane, I just go across to one, I go up to root three, so it's going to be right about here. And I can represent that as a vector um, starting from the origin. So this right here is actually my complex number Z, uh, which is one plus root three I. Okay, so that is all that is to it for this first introduction video. We covered this new type of number I, what a complex number is in Cartesian form, and then how to visualize that on our complex plane.